Hi everyone, I'm Ali Reza Goli and this is One Minute with Valves. Today, I'm going to talk about pneumatic rack and pinion actuators as a quarter 10 actuation solution among others. Let's get started and polish our knowledge on this important industrial process component. In a few minutes, we'll look into the concept, operation and sizing of these actuators as well as a brief review of main accessories that usually come with them. Let's first uh, take a brief look at the actuator tree to find out where rack and pinion actuators are in terms of function and application. There are three main automatic actuation types, electric, hydraulic, and pneumatic. For pneumatic also, three main quarter turn types are scotch and yoke, vane, and rack and pinion. This family of actuators is used for quarter turn valves like butterfly valves, ball valves, and fly valves. We will only discuss rack and pinion actuators in this video and leave the other types for the next episodes. Now we are looking into the design concept for both double acting and spring return rack and pinion actuators. We also need to recognize the main parts for installation and commissioning. Let's check it out in more detail. In this sketch, you can see the double acting function. Air pressure is shown by yellow color, indicating both opening and closing movements. With pressurizing each of the two ports here, we can change the status of actuator and thus actuated valve. The critical point to consider is that in case of air failure in double acting actuators, the valve will usually remain in the last position. With a few springs added to the design, we'll have the spring return actuator. Those springs are purposed to bring back the pistons and let the actuated valve come into its fail position. Valve fail position is defined as the final position of valve, open, close, or last, when there is not efficient supplier pressure available to adjust the valve status. This function is illustrated here pretty well. As long as the actuator is pressurized by sufficient air pressure, somewhere between 4 to 7 bar, or approximately 60 to 100 psi, the valve can stay open. Reduced or lost air pressure due to any system failure, let the springs prevail and impose the close fail position. Let's now get back to the main parts. See, racks, pinion, spring, spring cartridge, stroke limiter, and body here. Rack and pinion actuators are not complicated to size. That being said, there are a few points to be considered in the selection process. First, we need to know the valve's required torque terminology. Among those listed here, we mainly deal with BTO, which is break to open, running, and ETC, which is end to close values, as we are going to follow a very simplified rule of thumb method. As you can see in the graph, for butterfly valve and ball valve, the maximum values of torque are needed when opening and, and uh, opening the valve called BTO. Therefore, this value plays an important role in calculations. Safety factor is sometimes requested, uh, requested by the customer based on the application. Otherwise, 30% is, is an acceptable margin in most industries. For double acting actuator selection, we need to calculate the required torque to choose the model which is able to provide sufficient output value. Let's quickly review a simple example. Imagine the valve we are going to size the actuator for is a butterfly valve with 60 Nm required BTO. 
Following the criteria for double acting actuator sizing, we need a model with uh, we need a model with uh, output torque higher than 78 newton meter. I looked up in one tech actuator catalog. Other manufacturers have also the same tables. Selected model for available air pressure of 5.5 bar, which is quite standard, would be DFS85, as highlighted here in the table. When it comes to spring return types, it needs more attention to select the best option for a given valve. For main, for, four main terms are defined here which we have to exactly understand their concept. TAS and TAE are air start and air in torques. Obviously, air start is maximum output as the spring is not still compressed. With the piston movement and loading the springs, output air torque decreases to finally reach to TAE. A spring torques are named similarly as TSS for spring start and TSE for spring end torques. Those are spring imposed torques in absence of any air inside the actuator, thus being fixed amount for a given actuator with a certain number of springs. Why are these terms are so important? Come to the next page to see the reason. Here you go. There are two main sizing criteria for each fail position type of actuator. If the one we are trying to size is fail close, we would take TAS and TSE into consideration and make sure they both are bigger than required actuator torque, which in fact is BTO multiplied to our safety factor. For fail open type, there is similar criteria this time with TSS and TAE. Let's see an example. Imagine we have a ball valve which the manufacturer already informed us through its technical sheet about a BTO of 100 Nm. And we are going to take a 30% safety margin for our fake close actuator sizing. Therefore, we need both air start and spring end torques to be more than 130 newton meter. To make it easier, we usually start with spring column in actuator torque tables, and then look for the air column based on our available air pressure, which is 5 bar here. Looking into the table, you can see the spring wise, we are good with model DFS 145 with eight springs. Nine turn or more can also work as TSE or TS spring at zero degree or T minimum of spring is bigger than 130. Getting back to the air column, our air torques are also pretty good in highlighted row for eight springs. In this case, we can also go for more spring numbers to make the torques more balanced. But I personally prefer less springs, meaning less weight and less price. Here are the numbers extracted from the table and a good illustration of the torque values comparing to the required valve uh, torques. It is always recommended that we check two important things after sizing to firm it up. First, we need to make sure about our torque balancing for the other two values. Here, R is a simplified coefficient to correct the torque value for valve open position. On the other hand, we'd like to ensure the actuator torque is not too much to damage the valve stem. MAST, which stands for maximum allowable shaft torque, should be provided by the valve manufacturer. With checking these two criteria, we can finalize our selection.
Rack and pinion actuators come with some regular accessories like all of other pneumatic actuators. We can mount position indicators or limit switches. They send feedbacks uh, of open or close or a certain position of the valve. Usually need filter regulator and solenoid valve to, to make sure thin supply air with adjusted pressure is going to be delivered properly to the actuator ports. Solenoid valves are normally attached to the actuator body through NAMUR connection or NAMUR connection interface. When the valve is supposed to work as a flow control component, a positioner can also be used. In that case, usually both solenoid valve and position switches can be omitted because those are integrated in the positioner. Emergency manual override or handwheel is the other common accessory which might be added if the valve should be operated in case of power and or air failure. Thank you for it, your attention. If you come across any complication for your sizing or need more information, just leave me a comment.